I want to say that today we have um, an opportunity to begin to do what we can uh, in this next coming year to cement the relationship that we have so uh, willingly undertaken to improve the relationship between Indigenous and non-Indigenous people. But the most important acknowledgement that we can all make today is for the survivors and their children who are here with us and those who are watching from afar. Without the advocacy and the contributions of survivors, September 30th would be just another day in the calendar. It is only because of the strength and the courage of survivors that we had a Truth and Reconciliation Commission. We now have a national center. And today, we mark a national day for this important work. I want to thank the National Center for Truth and Reconciliation for the invitation to be with you today. The team at the NCTR, led by Stephanie Scott, is doing important work not only during Truth and Reconciliation Week, but all year long on behalf of all survivors. Survivors lead us to this moment as the journey of, in the journey of reconciliation when they are on their personal journeys of healing and as they continue to seek justice for what took place at the hands of the government, the church, and other actors. I remain grateful for their steadfast commitment to uncovering and giving light to the truth. When the Commission envisioned a National Day for Truth and Reconciliation, we had hoped for it to be a day of intention, reflection, and discussion, for Canadians to take a day out of their lives, to lend their ears and their hearts to survivors, to listen to them, and to resolve to do better in the next 364 days that follow until the next National Day. Because this important work of reconciliation is not a one-day affair. As we say, it will take us several generations, as it took us several generations to create this situation that we now face. So my message to Canadians is this. Today and every day, watch and listen to the stories of survivors, their families, and their communities. We must all recognize that the Indian residential school system is not just something for your history books. It is something that Indigenous peoples are still feeling the effects of each and every day. And in many ways, non-Indigenous people in this country also feel the effects of what has been part of the history of this nation uh, and that it's had upon their lives as well. We in the Indigenous community are in a constant state of grieving, it seems sometimes, for the families that were broken, for the cultures that were torn apart, and for the children that never made it home. For non-Indigenous Canadians, I hope that this day, September 30th, will hold an important place in your hearts, for you must understand that the way that you have been raised and educated has also had an impact upon you and your sense of who you are and your sense of who we are. This is not a radical concept to pause and to reflect. You do so for other days and occurrences throughout your life quite routinely. On November 11th, for example, you wear your poppy and you honor the veterans for Remembrance Day. You pause and reflect on the history of your country, as complicated as it can be. On September 30th, I am simply asking that you do the same. Just as we acknowledge the legacy of Her Majesty, the late Queen Elizabeth II, as complicated as it can be, Many governments in Canada were quick to acknowledge and observe a holiday on short notice, but unfortunately are still not embracing the meaning of today. On September 30th, I am simply asking you to extend the same courtesy to survivors that you are used to doing for others. Yes, our country's history is complicated, and it is not always easy to review, but you don't make it better by ignoring it or glossing over it. You make it better by helping carry out the calls to action, by learning, 
by unlearning and by resolving to do better. Because this story is not over. Records, for example, are still being turned over by the church authorities. Burial sites are still being discovered. And so many survivors and their families are still seeking closure for what happened to their siblings, cousins, and children. On September 30th and beyond, we must resolve to stand with them, to have their backs. Don't leave them to do this work alone. We need your help. We need your understanding, and we need you to ensure that this is forever made a part of Canada's national memory. Miigwech.